we're in a different setting right now, as you can tell. Maybe this is awkward, but maybe it's fun. <laughs> so, as I told you guys, I am still at my mom's and um, in her kitchen when making recipes. And I wanted to bring the aesthetics back into game. Is it working? I'm not sure. <laughs> no, okay, so this intro is this weird because I decided to try something new and I filmed a little recipe for you guys from the top, like from the bird perspective and I thought the intro should be matching because why not, <laughs> right? So this time I prepared a Twix recipe, like a vegan chocolate caramel bar Twix inspired not sponsored by the way <laughs> um and yeah i hope you like it if you recreate it let me know if not then still let me know how you like the video and i have a banana bread in the oven and the timer says it's done so i have to go <laughs> yeah have fun watching the video and um bye <laughs> Hi guys, let the voiceover begin. So first we're gonna add 150 grams of flour to our bowl along with a pinch of salt, a half teaspoon of cornstarch and a half teaspoon of baking powder. 50 grams of vegan butter or 40 grams of melted coconut oil and three to five tablespoons of water. Then we mix that together and knead it until it forms a dough. The dough should not be sticky and rather dry. Then I put the dough into this cute container and put it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. After that we're gonna roll out the dough into a rectangular shape and I use this baking dish to get the shape right and if you have one too I would highly suggest you use one as well because it really helps later on when we have to spread the caramel layer onto the cookie bars. When the shape is right, I cut the dough and put it in the oven at 200 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes until the cookies are golden brown. Now we're going to prepare the caramel layer and for that we're going to add 120 grams of nut butter. I'm using brown almond butter here but you can use any actually. And 100 grams of liquid sweetener. So I used coconut blossom syrup, but if you want a lighter caramel color, then you could also use maple syrup or agave. But I just think that with the coconut blossom syrup, the caramel gets more chewy. And if you use maple syrup instead, then you get a more liquid caramel layer. Oh, and by the way, we're also adding vanilla and salt to this. Then stir that together. And that's basically it. So you have your caramel. When the cookies are out of the oven, they should look something like this. You want to let them cool. And now you want to put them back into the baking tray. But actually, no. Abort mission here. <laughs> right now. <laughs> because I did it like this at first, but it is way easier if you line the baking dish with parchment paper first. Then spread the caramel on top and then at the cookies but i didn't do that at first so just for entertainment purposes let's see how i struggled <laughs> don't do it like that kids don't do it told you this was gonna be messy <laughs> Uh, 
actually it still worked somehow but it's way easier if you just line the baking dish with parchment paper first add the caramel and then add the cookies yeah <laughs> i had one extra cookie left which didn't fit in the baking dish so he gets a little extra attention Then put these in the freezer for overnight or at least two hours. And as soon as the caramel layer hardened up, you can cut them into the individual bars, which should be easy because he cut the dough before baking. And if you have bars which have maybe a little bit too much of caramel, like oozing out, you can cut them as well. Then melt some chocolate. I used about, I think, 200 grams of dark chocolate, but you can also use vegan milk chocolate or even vegan white chocolate would be nice, I guess. Then coat each individual bar. And put them in the fridge to harden up. And because we don't waste any chocolate on this channel, <laughs> I decided to make some crunchy chocolate bits and just added anything I had on hand to the leftover melted chocolate, stirred it up and added it to a cutting board lined with parchment paper and put it in the fridge as well. So once the chocolate has hardened up, you're basically done. You can store the Twix bars in the fridge for about two weeks or in the freezer for even longer. And for the crunchy chocolate bits, you can just Break them apart and store them in the fridge or the countertop for basically forever. <laughs> and yeah, that was it. I hope you liked the video and see you next time.